Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. I've heard so much be said about Ferris Bueller's Day Off from like a film analysis perspective, and almost none of it I agree with. I mean, if anyone is looking at this film from an anarcho-capitalist lens, then... They could be fascist anarchists. It still wouldn't change the fact that I don't own a car. Like, I don't know how to disagree with myself because in my How to Analyze Film video, which was about the Mask of Zorro, I basically said that different interpretations of a movie, even if it's not the artist's intent, can add meaning to a film and still be valid. But like, I disagree with any kind of political take on Ferris Bueller's Day Off. No thank you. But Ferris Bueller is a bit of a personal one for me. It was my dad's favorite movie. It's my favorite movie. It was the first movie my daughter ever saw when she was a newborn. It impacted me and my attendance record in high school. It is my favorite movie, full stop. So when it comes to the theories and analyses on this flick, I've pretty much read them all. I've also noticed a common theme, like a lot of theories seem to center around Cameron. Understandably so, because people say he's actually the main character given the fact that he's the one with like the most definitive arc in this film, which I also disagree with, but we'll get to that in a minute. There's also theories that the whole movie is a fever dream by Cameron, who actually was sick at the beginning of this film. There's even a theory that Cameron becomes Tyler Durden from Fight Club, which is like, I, I think it's one of those ironic theories. I don't think anyone actually takes that one seriously. Shut up! But if you're one of those people, I just want to point something out to you. It's, it's a really small thing, so it's pretty subtle. You may have missed it, but um, the title of the f***ing movie. It's Ferris Bueller's day off. The whole story is told by him. He's the narrator. It's through his perspective. From start to finish, he's the first face that we see. He's the last one we see before the credits roll. And then again, after the credits roll, it's not about Cameron or Jeannie or anyone else. It's about Ferris. And the message communicated through his character, I think is one that kind of gets a little overanalyzed. And I want to talk about the meaning of this film as I see it, but I also want to kind of undress some of that too. You see a lot of analysis about this movie points to Cameron's arc because, well, he has an arc and Ferris doesn't, so he must be the main character and Ferris remains a little shit the whole time. And I get how that makes sense. Like, I'm not, you know, it's not like I don't understand the rationale behind it. I completely get it. I just disagree with it. Because there is an arc for Ferris. He does start out this movie sick and he ends cured. Not sick in an ill with like a bodily infection kind of way, but sick of the daily grind. He's sick of homework. He's sick of school. He's sick of expectations. So he creates a day that's just driven by pure human impulse to just enjoy life for a day and break away from the mundanity of daily life. And at the end, he's cured of that ailment, presumably going back to, you know, back to the grind after all of this, right? With a more mentally well-off disposition. I don't think it's promoting nihilism or anarchy or any of the stuff that people tend to say that it is. It's about one simple fact, and that fact is that life moves pretty fast. Really, you can just look at this movie as like an over-the-top mental health day. Still, I get it, I get it, I hear you. I get how he doesn't really transform all that much, but a character arc doesn't always have to be transformative, because when it comes to characters, change isn't always a good or even necessary thing. I might be preaching to the choir here, but there's two types of characters in story. There's dynamic and there's static. Dynamic characters are the characters who overcome some kind of thing, right? They're characters who undergo some important change in the course of the story. Cameron, Jeannie, Sloane, they're all dynamic characters. And yeah, Cameron's is like the easiest arc to grab onto. I am not going to sit on my ass as the events that affect me unfold to determine the course of my life, I'm going to take a stand. He learns to overcome his anxiety and confront his fears, confront his father. But remember how I said that Cameron isn't the only one in this film that has an arc? Jeannie has an arc. She learns to stop being jealous of the special treatment that her brother seems to get and accept her role as the older sibling, which I personally feel seen by as the oldest sibling in my family. And then Sloane's arc is a bit more subtle, but she doesn't really believe in marriage or monogamy. And then after spending the day with Ferris, she wants to marry him. So she learns to overcome her fear of, I dare say, commitment. He's gonna marry me. Which leads me to Ferris, and he's a static protagonist. And a static character is one who doesn't undergo any significant change in a story, but that's not to be confused with a flat character, who is a one-dimensional character, who isn't layered, who isn't deep. 
So Ferris is a static character, yes, because although he isn't changed by the end of the movie in any substantial way, he does have character depth. He's wise beyond his years, he's a little bit manipulative, but he cares deeply about his friends, he's jealous that his sister got a car and he got a computer, and he somehow has like a really high GPA despite not giving really any kind of a shit and just doing the bare minimum. He's not flat and one dimensional, he's got depth to him. And I'm beating around the bush here, but all this just to say that being a static character isn't necessarily a bad thing. People seem to think that. People seem to think that to be a good character, you have to learn a lesson. But the best static characters change the world through their persistence and teach everyone else a lesson. Here's a couple of great examples, right? Sherlock Holmes, Charlie Bucket from Willy Wonka, Atticus Finch from To Kill a Mockingbird, Dumbledore from Harry Potter, Indiana Jones, Winnie the Pooh, fucking Shrek. They're all static characters. Change isn't always good. Sometimes a character doesn't need to change. Sometimes their constant moral perspective is something that the world actually needs a bit more of. And in the case of Ferris, he's exactly what everyone around him needs to grow. His loose spirit, his indifference towards the rules, his liberal attitude towards life is a breath of fresh air in a world where people can be so uptight and petty and cling to their anger when all that does is ruin their own lives and make them miserable. Ferris takes his friends out for a day across the city of Chicago, showing them so much of what life has to offer from sports games to art, from music to fine dining. He's an inciting character who inspires everyone around him to just fucking live a little. His sister Jeannie, for example, spends the whole movie trying to play gotcha to catch him in the act because she feels that life is so unfair towards her. She hates that he just gets away with everything that he does. And in that way, she starts off as kind of a villain. But after she speaks to Charlie Sheen's character, she comes to the realization that the reason life is unfair is because of the limitations that she put on herself. And it takes Ferris skipping school to get her into the position where she can learn that lesson. Why should he get to ditch when everybody else has to go? You could ditch. Yeah, I'd get caught. So you're pissed off because he ditches and doesn't get caught, is that it? And your problem is you. You ought to spend a little more time dealing with yourself, a little less time worrying about what your brother does. I mean, that's the message of this movie. That's the whole thing right there. That's why this matters. Get out of your own way. Life is too short to spend it agonizing over every little meaningless thing. It goes by so quickly that there's really no time to let something as trivial as high school dictate how you're gonna use the precious little time that you have left on this earth. I've been in high school where everything feels like the world is falling apart. Everything falls on who your friends are. And if you have a car and how well you score on the SATs, but when you grow up, you realize that there's so much more to life than high school, that none of that shit matters, and Ferris just gets that, but he just gets it at a little bit younger age than most of us do. I mean, shit, look at the villain in this movie, right? He is somebody who is so ingrained in the idea of the importance of high school that he grew up to become a school principal. Edward Rooney acts as the foil to Ferris's character. It's who you could wind up becoming if you don't start to embrace the little pleasures of life. He's a stand-in for a villain. He's, like I said, he's the foil to Ferris Bueller, but really the thing that everybody in this movie is overcoming is themselves, and Ferris helps them do that. And maybe the fact that Ferris Bueller's Day Off gets so overanalyzed is kind of an exemplification of this, right? In a world of film analysis and video essays, people can, can get so used to overanalyzing that they spend their time focusing on the minutia of what a film does to explain a larger theme about politics or race or sexuality. And that's why I love the fact that this movie even addresses something like that, right? It even has a moment where it ridicules the very notion of film analysis itself. In... What way does the author's use of the prison symbolize the protagonist's struggle? And how does this relate to our discussion of the uses of irony? And yeah, I'm one of those people sometimes, not gonna sit here on a high horse and act like I don't literally have a whole YouTube channel dedicated to doing just that. But Ferris Bueller matters because it's far simpler than anyone might make it out to be. And so is life. This movie is trying to teach people not to sweat the bullshit because life is too short. There's more to life than your school or your job or the thing that you do from nine to five during the week. Life moves fast in one singular direction with one destination for all of us. And films like this teach us that in life, the journey is far more important than the destination that it leads to. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Uh, I also take video requests in the comments. So if you got something, throw it in the comments below. And yeah, if there's anything else you want me to analyze, leave it in the comments. Or if there's something else that you're interested in, go check out my channel. I've probably covered it already.